What is a self-directed individual retirement account, better known as an SDIRA? Hey, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked it. That's what we're going to talk about on today's show, because in my mind, it's one of the greatest ways to protect and preserve my family's wealth outside of the volatility and the craziness of whatever happens on Wall Street or with these corrupt government officials who are destroying the value of the US dollar, which is what's happening right now. For the first time in over a decade, we've seen the decline of the US dollar, and this could be the end of the dollar bull market. For a long time, people said, hey, why would I want to invest in gold and real estate when I could just make four or five percent maybe in treasury bonds, right? Well, last week something switched, and now that move is a break from the past. For the first time in about 11 years, people are moving away from the U.S. dollar. It was a clear sign that we are now seeing a, a run towards real estate and precious metals. And one way to invest in those incredible assets is to use a self-directed individual retirement account because it's more flexible than what a traditional IRA is when it comes to what types of investments are allowed. It also provides the investor with control over investment choices. That's why at our company at Morris Invest, we're able to set up self-directed retirement accounts in about 10 minutes for our clients. And then they are able to buy full service rental real estate that cash flows tax free inside of the self-directed account. Now, there's a reason Wall Street doesn't want you to know about this vehicle. It's because they don't control it. This is not one of you know Wells Fargo's accounts or a Fidelity account. No, no. This is your own account. It gives you full control of your retirement. It's not restricted to the standard IRA investments, stocks, bonds, CDs, mutual funds. No, you can invest in just about anything inside of your SDIRA. It's designed to allow for a variety of investment options, such as using retirement funds to purchase rental real estate, digital currencies, precious metals, and other items of interest. Additionally, this type of retirement savings account will enable an individual to branch out from these traditional asset choices, which can result in a diversification of their entire portfolio. Imagine having a self-directed IRA. Let's say you have $100,000 in that self-directed IRA. You could invest in real estate, right? Which is what I usually do. I could take a portion of that and say, lend it to a startup. You know, maybe there's a Silicon Valley startup that I'm interested in, in investing in. Well, from my self-directed IRA, I could invest inside of that startup. And then whatever profits that I make would go back into my self-directed IRA tax free. The same thing with rent from my real estate that rental property will grow tax free. And as the tenant is paying down my mortgage, that cash flow from the tenant goes inside of the self directed account. And then when I'm able to tap into that account at retirement age, boom, it's all tax free growth. It's a beautiful, beautiful platform. So who should invest with an SDIRA? Well, SDIRAs are best for those people who wish to have more control over what they invest in. And who would like to maintain control over their investment? Alternatively, when your money is tied to a traditional IRA, someone else is basically in control of your money. Again, this is why Wall Street doesn't want you to know about this, okay? Because they make money off of you investing using their vehicles. When you have a self directed IRA, no one's making money but you. Yes, there's a custodian, but that's just like a few hundred dollars a year just to maintain your account. But Fidelity is not making tens of thousands of dollars off of the funds that they chose for you inside of your 401k. You see how this whole corruption works? Again, a 401k plan was never meant to stand on its own. That's why so many Americans, when they start a new job, they just sign up for their 401k plan. They hope that their retirement is taken care of by their employer and the funds that the employer plus the Fidelity or whomever is backing their 401k plan chose for them. They just sort of set it and forget it. They go in there, they look at a little pie, pie chart and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm younger, so maybe I should be more risky. Maybe I'm middle-aged, so I shouldn't. I should be half and half. Oh, I'm older. Yeah, I probably should be more conservative. They click that, and they're done. It's ridiculous. You cannot live off of a 401k plan. You know, the average 401k plan at retirement is between seventy and ninety thousand dollars. So when you retire, you're going to live off this pile of seventy thousand dollars for the rest of your life. It's not going to happen. It's a joke, and basically, they've been lying to you for many, many years. Now, the beauty of a self-directed IRA is that you are in control of your funds. 
Plus, look, the stock market ultimately steers the ship as to how much money is in your account. So if you've got a 401k, 401k plan, you don't know. You're at the mercy of that stock market. I mean, just look what's happened over the past year. You know, if you would like to be one of the people who actually can make your own calls and calls the shots on your own future, then that's why an SDIRA is right for you. Additionally, you may have a particular interest that will enable you to put your knowledge or your passion for a particular subject to good use. You know, it might not be real estate like it is for me. It might be something totally different that you use your self-directed retirement account to invest in. For instance, maybe you're an expert in cryptocurrencies. We certainly need you right now after the collapse of uh, FTX over the past week. It's been a disaster, right? So maybe you have a passion in that. Or you do have a passion in, in real estate. You know, what you can do is you can use your funds to invest in these areas. It would be a really smart move, as well as enjoyable, because you're saying, okay, my hard-earned money is not just investing in some random mutual fund that my employer makes me invest in. No, I'm actually investing in, you know, a group of townhomes, uh, a group of vacation rentals, a long-term buy-and-hold piece of real estate, whatever it is, right? You can do that. Please note, though, that although you do have control over what you invest in, by law, an SDIRA account will always have that custodian that I told you about, a trustee who is in place that oversees the account to a certain extent. Now, when you, if you book a call with our team at Morris Invest, I'll have a link in the description, our team can help you get set up with a self-directed account in about 10 minutes. It's that fast. But then you have total control, and the custodians that we work with are fantastic, and they're really inexpensive. I'm talking just like a few hundred dollars a year for them to be the custodian of your account. That's it. You're not getting hit with all of these hidden fees. Like I had a financial advisor years ago when I lived in Philadelphia and the hidden fee, she was charging me like $15,000, but I didn't know it was buried deep within the text. Deep, deep, deep. They, they hid it from me. That's the total difference between working with like a financial advisor and having checkbook control of your own self-directed IRA. It's all right there. It's totally transparent. There won't be any hidden fees anywhere. That's the beauty of it. So what can you invest in with a self-directed IRA? Great question. Well, for those who are new to self-directed IRAs, you might be surprised as to what type of alternative investment options are allowed out there. So let's take a look at a few options that you'll have if you switch from a traditional IRA over to a self-directed IRA, or even leaving a 401k and moving over to an SD IRA. So number one, and my favorite, is residential real estate. The reason I love investing in residential real estate, and that's what my company is built on, is because that grows tax-free. So not only am I having a tenant that's paying down the mortgage or loan on the property, which I would get, right? So I'd have a loan on the property and put up some of my own money from my retirement account. So let's say I had like $50,000 in my retirement account to work with. That's like a down payment amount. Well, then I would have funding and financing from a bank for the rest of it. And then it's growing tax-free inside of that account because a tenant is now paying the rent and is giving me increased equity, paying down the mortgage simultaneously. Then when I retire, all of that rent that has come in from those properties, when I am able to tap out of that when I'm retired, that's all tax-free. I don't have to pay taxes on that income. That's why this is so powerful, guys. I hope you just understand how powerful this is with types of returns that you can get far exceeding anything that you can get on the stock market. Not only that, it's a hedge against inflation because as the US dollar continues to decline in value and lose value, residential real estate as a tangible asset inside of a retirement account continues to appreciate. Again, I could go on and on and on about residential real estate. I love it. Okay, what about commercial properties? You could own a, an office building, something like that. Commercial property is also fantastic. What about raw land? I could buy raw land inside of my self-directed account. Maybe I find a plot of land for $5,000 in a good area. Great. I buy it in there. It's in there. And I don't even touch it, worry about it. The taxes are paid out of the self-directed retirement account. And 15, 20 years from now, maybe that raw land has appreciated in value. Great. Now, I like raw land, but you do not get the benefits that you get from Abby actually having a structure on the land. That's why I love residential real estate so much. You get the tax benefits in a way that you don't get from just straight up raw land.
What if you wanted to buy trusts, you know, trust or trust deeds and mortgages? You can do that. You want to buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds? You can still do it, right? That's the beauty of a self-directed account. Just because now I've left the confines of my 401k, well, now I can still invest in stocks if I wanted to. I can still buy treasury bonds if I want to. I can do all of that in the self-directed account. But now I have control. You know, when most people sign up for a 401k plan at their employer, they're given a very narrow set of things that they can invest in. And a lot of times, the, the funds that they get to pick from include the company's funds for whom they work. You know, so they work for Home Depot, they have to buy Home Depot stock. Like, what a scam that is, right? No, no, now you get to pick what you want to invest in. Um, startup businesses, like I mentioned, you can buy, maybe and invest in a, a startup, a Silicon Valley startup. If you have a friend who's starting a business you'd like to invest out of your self-directed account, you can absolutely do that. What about precious metals? I'm a big fan of gold and silver. You can do that as well. What about private stock? Not even on the stock market, but private stock. Digital currencies, if you're into crypto. Oil and gas, other commodities. You can invest in limited liabilities companies, limited partnerships, annuities, promissory notes, tax certificates, tax liens, agriculture. You get my point. The list is pretty endless. That's why I love the flexibility of a self-directed IRA. It's a really powerful vehicle. And again, this is why Wall Street doesn't want you to know about it. They want to control your finances. Funny story, when I was leaving my employer many, many years ago, when I had a day job, and I really wanted to invest in real estate using my 401k. I had all this money in my 401k, but it was tied up in these crappy stocks. And I wanted to be able to leverage that and buy real estate. So I called up Fidelity, who was my, you know, whatever at the time, my, 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 my accountant. I said, hey, Fidelity, I want to, uh, can, can I set up a self-directed account with you guys? I want to invest in real estate. And he said, well, yeah, we have, you can do self-direct, you can self-direct what you want to do. And he was lying to me. And I said, oh, really? Because I knew he was lying to me. I just was waiting for him to, to admit to it. And I said, so you mean to tell me that if I found a piece of rental property, an investment property, I could use my 401k, we could set up a separate account or I could transfer it out of here and I could buy this property? And he said, oh, no, you can't do that. No, no, but we, you can invest in real estate stocks if you want which is a joke, who would want to invest in a REIT or real estate investment stocks? As Tom Wheelwright likes to point out, that's like three steps removed from actually owning real estate. You don't get the tax benefits of owning real, real estate through a REIT. I said, no, 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 no. No, I'm not going to invest in a, in a real estate stock with you guys. I want to invest in actual real estate. I said, sorry, you can't do that. So I had to wait till I left that employer before I could take my 401k and roll it into my self-directed IRA, which would allow me then to buy multiple rental properties that now grow tax-free. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this, our team can help you get set up with a self-directed IRA in literally 10 minutes. Just go to morrisinvest.com. We'll have a link in the description below. Click on the book a call button. It's totally free. We'll get you set up. And we also build brand new construction rental properties from the ground up, which if that's your cup of tea, great. Have a discussion with our team members. Then you could buy one of those properties inside of your self-directed IRA and watch it grow tax free. That's the answer to whether or not you should invest in a self-directed IRA. We'll see you next time, everyone.